What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs, oldschoolstereo.com. You guys have been asking for a while for me to show off this Rockford Power 650. So let's do it. What's going on guys? Derek here from OldSchoolStereo.com. Check out the 1960 Terminator Hearse from Wayne Harris. This is classic. Thanks to Wayne for letting me use this clip. You can see he had four of these amps way back in the day. We have a story we'll link below to 12 Volt Talk where you can go check that out where he talks about that. Today we're going to talk about the Power 650. Back in the mid 80s to early 90s, the Power 650 was the middle amp in the power lineup from Rockford Fosgate, brother Steve Mead tested the Power 300 a while back. Check the video description below. We'll have a link to his video. You can see how that amp performed on the dyno. We also tested the Power 1000C top end amp way back. Again, check the video description for a link to see how the amp performed. Impressive as always. Here is a late 80s, I think it's an 89 ad from Rockford Fosgate. You can see the three Power Series amps. Let's pull out the 1989 Car Audio and Electronics directory. And here we'll see the page for Rockford Fosgate. You can see the Power 650 is right there in the middle. $1,500 in 1989. That's equivalent to around $3,100 US dollars in 2020. Amp is rated 125 watts by four channels at four ohms, 160 per channel at two ohms, or you can bridge it down to two channels to get 325 watts per channel. It also has a high pass and a low pass crossover, uh, which is selectable in the amp, and that's 12 dB per octave. And here we'll show you one of the shrouds, and it looks like somebody had a chrome shroud in here at one time, and I think they just put the original one off their amp in here. But this one's in pretty good shape. This is one of the earlier generations. I'll talk about that here in a minute. But you can see the crinkle finish. And the earlier designs of the 650 used a two inch fan. And here I'm going to show you, this is the graphics from a Power 650, the bipolar one there on the top. And then we have the middle version, the 650 with the Dracula graphics. And then we have the chrome version, which you can see the rafters in the background because she's so shiny. It kind of looks gold in this picture, but it really is chrome. So now that I've already kind of mentioned that, let's talk about the different versions of the Power 650. 1984 was the Bipolar 650, which is extremely rare because most of those were turned back into Rockford because they had problems. 85 to 89 had the Dracula font. 90 to 92 had the Diamond R logo. 92 to 93 had a four inch fan. And the last three generations used MOSFETs for the outputs as well as for the power supply. Now here again is the 1984 version. You can see the way it has the uh, little arrow there with the C and it has a weird looking 650. I actually, this is my favorite design. I really like this one. The next generation up, you can see the, no the one thing to notice about it is the W under power kind of looks like it's an upside down M. You can see what we call the Dracula font there for Rockford Fosgate. So yeah, this is uh, the second generation. And the later generation, you can see here, it has the Diamond R logo for the Rockford Fosgate. You can see that, and that's, they still use that today, so that's been around for a long time. And the W on the power looks more like a W. And again, the final generation here was the 4-inch fan model. You can see on the right side, has a much larger opening for the amp, for a fan. <laughs> And yes, the fan on these are not temp temperature controlled. They just stay on all the time. Now, some of the early models had this DIN connector as well as RCAs. So you'll see that in a minute when I show the switch. And this worked with some of the EQs that Rockford had and Dash. It would power those. And other models had four RCA inputs like you can see here. They all had the nine pin Molex style connector and it came off on a harness and just a bunch of wires. Here's the amp without any shroud on it. Looks kind of basic. You can see where the fan mounts there at the very end. And let's talk about dimensions. 18.3 inches long, 8.2 inches wide, as well as the millimeter equivalents there. And then for the height, it's about 2.5 inches or 63.5 millimeters. 
Now the Power 650 four inch fan model that I have, it was in pretty rough shape when I got it, as you can see here in the picture. I sent it off to my brother Sean down in South Carolina to give it a once over and you can see here by the pictures it was pretty dirty. He stripped it down, cleaned the circuit board, replaced the capacitors, he re-ran the wiring, put some real high quality RCAs on there and re-ran the uh, cabling for the speakers, made it look really clean and also added some nicer 8 gauge wire. These amps came with really stiff power and ground. If you guys have one of these amps, you know what I'm talking about. And also, uh, here again is the amp before I had the shroud redone. I sent this off to Car Audio Restorations to have it repaired. And you can see, look at this thing. It looks super, super sweet. It looks brand new. In fact, it looks better than new, honestly. And uh, yeah, just really nice. You can see the layout of the amp here. There's the four inch fan, the silk screening looks perfect. Super, super nice. And Sean also used these terminal strips for the speakers, which is much easier than trying to use those bare wires. So I really like this. And on the amp, you can see there's the crossover switch for the high channel. There's the power LED and the input switch from two channel to four channel and the crossover switch for the low channel. He used super high quality RCAs. You can see those here as well as labeling each of the channels, the high channel and the low channel, with some super nice tech flex and all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna show you the end here of the amps and you can see the switch for the input, two channel to four channel. Now some of the older versions of the Power 650, it's gonna say DIN high and low or DIN high and low RCA for the switch. These are the amps that actually had the DIN connector. Again, these all had eight gauge for the power and ground. We upgraded to some nicer, newer wire and don't have that super stiff <laughs> wire. Um, the back of my amp was not refinished at the time. Uh, old school car audio res restorations was not doing that, but they actually do it now. So I have to send it off to get it done. On the bottom, there's a fuse access panel and there's gain controls. What's interesting about this amp is it's a four channel amp. It has independent gain controls for each channel. That's good and bad. It's kind of bad because it's hard to get them all exactly to match the same. Take four screws out. You can get access to the fuse access panel here. There are eight of these tiny AGU, mini AGU style fuses. They still sell these, but if you have one of these amps and it doesn't work right, make sure you check the fuses first. So what's hiding under here? Oh yes, old school power 650 MOSFET. This is the four inch fan version. Some of the last versions that were available of this particular model. This has been redone. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, Mike Schultz out of Rhode Island has got a, a company where he redoes all these shrouds and has them re-powder coated and re-silt screen and everything. Looks really good. It's very factory. I had this one touched up by Sean King. He rewired it, um, put new power and ground here, ran new speaker cables, ran some really, really awesome RCAs here, even put the little heat shrink on them. I mean, these are super high quality RCAs. He did this for me years ago, and this thing has just been kind of sitting on the shelf but you guys have asked, begged, pleaded, hey, Big D, let's find out how much that Power 650 does on the amp dyno. So here's the amp dyno. Here's the amp. And it's just going to take me a few minutes to get everything hooked up. I'm going to load all the channels. We've got the big dummy loads right here. And uh, yeah, let me get it hooked up and then we'll try it out on the dyno and see how much power it really does. All right, guys, here's the part you want to see, the amp dyno test to find out how much power these amps put out. I've been asked for like almost 10 years for me to test one of these. So I'm going to do it today. That's right. Before we do that, let's get it hooked up, turn it on, listen to the fan. All right, the first set of tests we're going to do here are the four channel tests. First up, we'll try four ohms with a 40 hertz test tone signal. Amp is rated 125 by four. 
and 137 and 135 certified 1% THD. Very nice. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point of the amp again. 40 hertz test track. 144, 143, right at 14 volts. Dynamic power sends a pulse tone into the amp, kind of simulates the dynamic headroom capability of the amplifier. We get right around 180 watts per channel at 4 ohms. Very good power. 2 ohms, again, this is 4 channel test. We're testing 2 of the 4 channels, but all the channels are loaded down. It's rated 162.5 by 4. You can see we got well over 200 watts, 220 watts or so per channel at 14.24. That was a certified test. Uncertified up to clipping, 220, again, right at about 224 watts per channel, 14.2 volts. Dynamic power, sending a pulse tone into the amp. Nice dynamic headroom for this amp. 332 watts per channel, right at 14.4 volts. Next up, we're gonna bridge the amp down to two channels and do the four ohm test. This is what a lot of people did back in the day with subwoofers to use the amp with subs. Rated 325 by two, as you can see, certified 472, 475. Wow, quite a bit more than the rated power. Uncertified, right about the same, 470 watts per channel awesome now the dynamic power mode here i did notice an anomaly one of the channels almost 700 watts 692 the other one 425 not really sure if that's uh, an issue one of the caps or something but it is interesting to note but i could not tell when i listened to it with speakers i just showed all the test here but you can pause this if you'd like to see the full results of the amp dyno sheet the amp did well we also tested one kilohertz and it did over 500 watts per channel at one kilohertz. Here is the amp kind of broken down a little bit. I think this is maybe a two inch fan model, but it still gives you the idea of what you can see inside. See the capacitors, you can see the power supply section, then you can see the output section there on the opposite side. This is the power supply section here. And then here is the output section for the speakers. Again, it's four separate channels. This amp is just beautiful. So let's get it hooked up to some subwoofers and try a test with some JL Audio 8W6s. So there you have the test of the Rockford Fosgate Power 650. We talked a little bit about the different models from 1984 all the way up to 1993. And yeah, you can see some of the old picks I have here. Drill a little bit. I don't have all these amps still. I've sold some things over the years. But it is fun to be able to test these things for you guys. And I apologize it's taken so long to do this test. I appreciate as always my Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash Old School Stereo. Extra special thanks goes out to Wayne Harris, Sean King, Mike Schultz, Travis, Stewart, Jesus Tires, Big D, I'm out of here!